On November 16th, 2023, Cassie filed a lawsuit against Diddy for the R word trafficking and for harming her. She filed this in the Federal District Court of Manhattan and accused Diddy of physically harming her throughout their 10 year long relationship. Diddy had met Cassie in 2005 when she was just 19 years old. The following year, Cassie signed to Diddy's record label Bad Boy Records, where she released her first debut album. Their romantic relationship supposedly began in 2007. According to court documents from Cassie, Diddy began exhibiting signs of control and abuse. She claims that Diddy aggressively urged her to ingest a lot of different drugs and was frequently violent towards her through their relationship. The lawsuit also provides egregious and gruesome details on several incidents, like the one we got video of, where Diddy allegedly got physical and R-worded her. Through her lawyer, Cassie was quoted saying, I'm finally ready to tell my story and speak on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationship. Here are some claims that uh, Diddy R-worded Cassie in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kick, and stomped on Cassie, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding, blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Cassie, which which would be about, I believe, Kid Cudi, forced Cassie to engage in inappropriate acts with male S workers while uh, pleasing himself, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive who he learned was nearby, demanded that Cassie carried his gun in her purse to make her uncomfortable and to demonstrate how dangerous he is. He also introduced Cassie to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and drugs and required her to get prescriptions, illegal prescriptions through her doctor for his own addictions. We're alleging in the lawsuit filed Thursday that after the two met back in 2005, Combs lured Ms. Ventura into an ostentatious, fast-paced and drug-fueled lifestyle and into a romantic relationship with him, adding he used illegal substances and threats of violence to force Ms. Ventura into repeated unwanted sexual encounters with male sex workers. The lawsuit also claims that throughout their relationship, Mr. Combs was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat Miss Ventura savagely. One day after Cassie bravely came forward with her lawsuit, there was a convenient settlement. On November 27th, 2023, Cassie and Diddy settled their lawsuit amicably. Now, I'm glad this didn't ultimately work in Diddy's favor because this story did not go away. But just one day after Cassie filed this lawsuit, they have settled. So he was going to pay her off with a big sum of money. Diddy made it very clear that when they settled, he was not admitting to wrongdoing and actually still stood by the fact that he said that um, these claims from Cassie were just a cash grab. Now, fast forward months later, Diddy is saying he's truly sorry for physically harming Cassie in a 2016 video. He had to issue a public apology after CNN published a video from hotel surveillance, which showed Diddy getting really physical with Cassie. And of course, his apology is being Yes, especially because in the past he had publicly announced that he had not done anything wrong. So um, now that there's evidence, he's uh, admitting to it. And I wonder how much more he has to admit to. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you got to do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. Keep in mind, Diddy paid $50,000 to secure this footage and to hide it from ever getting out. You can see Cassie trying to escape their hotel room and walk to the elevators. Diddy has a towel around his waist and he grabs her by the back and throws her onto the ground while still having his towel around him. He's kicking her, he's stomping her, and I guess he retrieves her purse and suitcase from the floor and takes her back to the room. Cassie's seen slowly standing up as she gathers herself and then he... Then I, I guess begins to shove her again before grabbing an object off of a coffee table, um, supposedly a glass vase, and chucking it at her. The LA County District Attorney's Office said that they were aware of this video circulating online, but again, um, even though it's difficult to watch, they can't do anything about it because it's been too long. I get so frustrated when talking about statute of limitations because it allows so many people to get away with their crimes. Even if there is video proof, there's no way that he could be held accountable, which I 
I think is wrong. Cassie's attorney responded to Diddy's apology, saying that Diddy's most recent statement is more about himself than the many people he hurt. When Cassie and multiple other women came forward, he denied everything and suggested that his victims were trying to get a payday. He was only compelled to apologize once his repeated denials were proven false, shows his pathetic desperation, and no one will be swayed by his disingenuous words. Which is a pretty damn harsh statement from Cassie's lawyer. I mean, I, she picked the right person. Cassie said, thank you for all the love and support from my family, friends, strangers, and those I have not yet met. Um, the outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now, but this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to someone I never thought I'd become. With a lot of hard work, I am better today, but I'll always be recovering from my past. She says, my only ask is that everyone open your hearts to believing victims the first time. It takes a lot of heart to tell the truth out of a situation that you are powerless in. I offer my hand to those that are still living in fear. Reach out to your people. Don't cut them off. No one should carry this weight alone. Even though Cassie's story may have somewhat been told, I think there's still a lot more for us to learn. But let's get into two more lawsuits, lawsuit number two and number three. A second woman files a lawsuit on November 23rd, 2023 against Diddy, alleging that he had drugged and essayed her. This lawsuit accuses Diddy of essaying a woman who was a former student at the Syracuse University by drugging her while out on a date in 1991. It also accuses him of filming the alleged incident, which is a theme in Cassie's case, and it makes me wonder if they are raiding his homes to get all of this lost footage. The lawsuit stated that the woman was in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk. Here are some more details from the suit. After the woman ate with Diddy at a Harlem restaurant, they went to the studio where she couldn't get out of the car, which I'm guessing that maybe she was still she was I mean drugged at this point so she couldn't even walk. He then relocated them to a place he was staying at to SA her. In the suit, it alleges that Diddy actually showed off this video he took of him harming this woman. A friend of the accuser claimed they saw the film days later with other men. So that's kind of an example of revenge PORN right there. A day after that, on November 24th, 2023, a third woman files an essay lawsuit against Diddy. Now she's only identified as Jane Doe and she alleges that she and a friend met Diddy and Aaron Hall at a New York event hosted by Uptown Records distributor. Quote, Diddy and Aaron were very flirtatious and handsy with Jane Doe and her friend, offering them drinks throughout the night. The two musicians then invited the women to Aaron Hall's apartment in New York. Quote, while at Aaron's apartment, Jane Doe was offered more drinks and was coerced into getting intimate with Diddy. They claim in a lawsuit that Diddy and Aaron took turns R-wording her and her friend. Quote, after Diddy finished doing his business, Jane Doe laid in bed, shocked and traumatized. As she was in the process of getting dressed, Aaron Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to do it again. Following the encounter, the woman fled Aaron Hall's apartment. After speaking with her friend later, she was told that she was also forced to do it with Aaron and Diddy. Days after the incident, Diddy allegedly visited the home that she and her friend were staying at. He was irate and began assaulting and choking Jane Doe to the point that she passed out. Diddy was searching for Jane Doe's friend because he was worried that she would tell the girl he was with at the time that him and Aaron had done that to them. So he was trying to threaten and intimidate these women so they didn't report on what they had gone through. It didn't get around and Diddy didn't get in trouble with his girlfriend. Now there was an act passed in New York called the New York Adult Survivors Act, which actually gets rid of that statute of limitations, which is probably why these lawsuits are being filed because now these women can actually go and seek justice. Now some of these lawsuits aren't just about Diddy. Like I mentioned, Aaron Hall was mentioned in actually one of Diddy's bodyguards was mentioned as well. On November 25th, 2023, Diddy's ex-security speaks out after being named in a lawsuit. Roger Bonds, who worked with Diddy a decade ago, was quoted saying, I'm willing to tell the truth because for so many years, I was quiet. Not only did Roger back Cassie's side of the story, but he also suggested he saved many other women from being harmed by Diddy. Now, Roger Bonds was ready to speak out, but the Cassie lawsuit wasn't just enough. But after this video came out, he was talking a lot more. Roger Bond said that he saw the rapper get physical with Cassie and Kim Porter, saying that Diddy has a godlike syndrome. This is when he did an interview with Pierce Morgan, where he spoke about watching Diddy get physical with Cassie and Kim Porter 
four or five times, which, you know, it's so sad that he witnessed that and didn't report it and that he felt scared enough of Diddy that he he couldn't. Roger said that Diddy's a king manipulator. He can manipulate anyone and anything. Money and power is what he's all about. He said that Kim Porter got to the point where she fought back because she realized how powerful she was. He knew those cameras was there, you know, but of course, as we heard, he came back to the hotel and he paid to get the footage, mm. but didn't know which cats he said inside a complaint that they gave her a copy of the footage also. Roger said there was a dark side of him and he was trying to hide that and that he wanted me to say it didn't exist. And I can't say that it didn't exist if it did exist. He added that he expects to hear more allegations against Diddy. Quote, I feel like there's going to be other people that come forward. How many times did you personally witness him be violent towards women? Uh, around four or five times. And was that all with Cassie or was it Cassie and other women? Uh, I seen him with Cassie and I seen him with Kim Porter, his uh, kid's mother. We spoke about Kim Porter in our last episode and all the evidence that suggests that her death wasn't a natural occurrence, that Diddy had a part in it. And to hear that she was comfortable challenging him is um pretty scary because he likes to off people that try to challenge him. What did you see him do with Kim Porter? I seen him inside the car, grab her up. I seen him smack her, you know. And one thing about Kim is Kim got to the point where she fought back because she realized how powerful she was. Thank you for watching this clip from the Let's Get Into It podcast. To view the full episode, visit the link listed below.